All right, what's up? I'm back again. I was on YouTube uh, this afternoon, and um, in my little stream or whatever, came a trailer for a new show on Hulu called um, The Handmaid's Tale. And you know what annoyed me about it? The only reason I'm even commenting on this is because it just shows the illiteracy of our country, basically. Um, it said, eerily timely. I was like, what? what what's eerily timely? Um, the book came out in 1985. <laughs> so how's this timely? You know, and, and it was written as a, you know, kind of as a commentary on the time that it was written when you had, you know, uh, Reagan was in office and this book, <clears throat> you know, um, was kind of a critique. You know, they're using Christianity kind of as this metaphor for, uh, you know, uh, the enslavement. I mean, she's a really good writer. I like this book. I mean, it was good. I've read it twice. Um, you know, but what do you mean eerily timely? Now, how is it eerily timely? The, 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 the book has been out since 1985. It's not eerily timely just because they turned it into a goddamn show. You know, that what that does to me, of course, it just annoys me because what that means is there's all these people out there who've never read the book, but suddenly there's a show and they're like, oh my goodness, it's so timely. <laughs> You've been hiding under a rock, stupid ass. Um, you know, and if you're into dystopian type fiction, um, this book, Swastika Night, by Marie Constantine. Um, Catherine Burdekin is her writer name. Um, oh my goodness. You want a dystopian uh, novel about women being um, basically enslaved? This is the book. In this book, the Nazis have won World War II. And they've developed, that they've created basically a culture that is like this totally macho, like 100 to the most extreme macho culture that you could ever imagine, okay? And women are, are nothing more really than creatures. Um, you know, this is, you know, women are like fifth class citizens, okay? Or, you know, they're like the lowest caste in the Indian caste structure, where there's just four, so they're at the very bottom, the laborers and the garbage collectors or whatever, <laughs> you know? Um, that book, Oh my goodness, yes. Swastika Night is incredible. Get a chance, pick it up. Uh, I found this copy, believe it or not, at Half Price Books, and I picked it up immediately. Uh, I had been looking for this book for a long, long time. Uh, she's written some other stuff that's really good, too. Um, again, she's not the most well-known author, and this book uh, is published by well, the Feminist Press, how to be, of course, um, and... The original was published many years ago, um, 1937, okay? Um, the first book I read of hers was a book called Proud Man, and that book is incredible, incredible. It, it is a person visiting from somewhere else who comes and interacts with people and follows these different little storylines uh, about how, basically, how stupid humans are, really. But really well done. So Proud Man is another good one to look. Proud Man is another good book to look for. The Swastika Night. If you like, you know, dystopian novels about women being mistreated, well, this is like top of the line. You know, I would say that both of these books, even though this one has, you know, part of the part of the rationale for keeping the women the way they are, of course, is a big part of it in the book is Christianity. Okay, so. Um, you know, and of course in Swastika Night, it's, it's the ideology of, of uh, Nazism. Um, it's male-dominated, male-centered, you, know, uh, you know, male-centric, um, you know, ideology taken to the extreme, of course, in the book. Um, same thing I would say with The Handmaid's Tale, but you know what's funny and ironic about these books, really, both of these books, is that they actually apply more to the religion of Islam than they do to Christianity, because Islam is actually a religion that really oppresses women. You know, I mean, um, I'm sure if the Christians were in complete power and had the authority they had, you know, a thousand years ago or whatever, I'm sure that they would do the same thing if they could, because that's how all these big organizations, these big organized religions work in the end, right? They just want to control and control and have everyone conform and conform, you know, but Islam, uh, Islam actually literally right now oppresses women, you know. These people, again, they, all these protesters, these, pro, these people protest, ah, they were, I'm so oppressed, the glass ceiling, oh, I don't make enough money, I, I only get 77 cents for the dollar, all that shit's been debunked. But those are your complaints, right? The glass ceiling, oh, I'm so oppressed. Okay, 
go to Saudi Arabia. If you want to complain about this country oppressing you, I'm a woman, I'm oppressed the patriarchy. Oh, fuck, here goes with the patriarchy again, right? If you're going to complain about the patriarchy, then you need to go to a theocracy like Saudi Arabia. Or go, go take a trip to um, Somalia, you know, or Ethiopia, you know. Um, you know, or if you're a white person, go down to South Africa. You know, let's see if you get oppressed. Really oppressed, though. Not these fictional microaggressive bullshit attacks. You know, oppressed. I'm oppressed. <laughs> His shirt's offensive. <laughs> you know, you think you're oppressed here? You're not oppressed, man. <laughs> you're in the freest country on the earth so far still. You know, we have rights in this country that don't even exist in some countries on the earth. You, you know, you're, you're not going to go to Bangladesh and go to the store and buy yourself a gun, are you? No, I'm sure you're not. She ain't got that right there, you know. Um, I'm just making a point. Anyways, so my point was about all this, though, is guys, if you get a chance, uh, read the novel rather than watch the show, you know. If you want to get even more extreme, if you want to know a little more about books, then read something a little bit less mainstream than this. Go to Swastika Night, okay. Excellent book. Um, I, I get annoyed, though, with people in this culture right now because... All this stuff already exists, and they get all excited about it because they're so ignorant and not well-read enough to even know that this is not eerily timely, okay? Just like 1984 suddenly became a big... Everybody was all excited when Trump got elected. Oh, it's 1984! Really? Are you kidding me? You weren't worried when Obama was storing all of our phone calls and admitted spying on everybody, and you weren't worried about Samsung smart TV recording your voices, and you weren't worried about people in prison without any sort of habeas corpus, you weren't worried about Guantanamo Bay or bombing Afghanistan or bombing Libya. But, nope. But when Trump came in, suddenly everybody was reading 1984. <laughs> they should have been reading that a long time ago because 1984 has been applicable to our culture and our government Probably since the early 60s, maybe. Let's just be let's be optimistic and pretend that it hasn't been that bad for the last hundred years. Let's say since the Spanish-American War, or even further back, uh, with you know our invasions in Mexico, our excursions in you know Latin America and Central America. Let's pretend that none of that happened. But these people are so stupid and uninformed and so unliterate, I guess you'd say, that they don't even know that these books exist and that they should have read them many, many years ago. Now they're suddenly timely. Uh, they've been timely all along. Uh, 1984 has never gone out of style. And if you don't want to read that novel because it's too long, I know it's got a lot of words in it, small print, well then read Animal Farm, which is about, of course, the Russian Revolution. You know, uh, you know, people, wake up. Read some damn books. Expand your mind. It will help you see the world a little bit clearly. A little bit clearly, but not completely clear. Does that make sense? I mean, we're, you know, reading is something that has just been dying. I mean, people are so ignorant, man. I mean, it is flabbergasting once again. I love that word flabbergasting because it applies to almost everything I run across on my daily, in my daily life. It, it, everything is just so stupid. <laughs> it's just so stupid. You, you, you really don't know what to do. You know, how do you, I mean, how do you keep up with the stupidity of our culture? Um, I don't understand. Here, here's another story. I'm just looking at the Telegraph. Um, homework. Saying it's not, they don't want to have homework. I'm not going to go into this. All right, anyways, guys. That's all I want to talk about. Go check out the book. Read The Handmade Tale. The book is better. It's going to be better than the, than the, the show. Of course, maybe the show will be good, too, if you're into that kind of thing. Of course, it, it could be considered by some to be Christian bashing, which is nothing new right now in our leftist-oriented culture. The SJWs would be right behind this and say, Islam's good, Christianity's bad, because they're totally confused and have absolutely no idea what you're talking about. If you want to be Mr. Literature, then read Swastika Knight. Again, excellent book. If you get a chance, pick it up. All right, guys, take care of yourselves. Avoid the stupidity, and don't be stupid yourself if you can. Uh, take care of you guys. Uh, have a great day, blah, 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 blah. Comment below if you want. If you're angry, hate me, good, excellent. If you love me, great, excellent, wonderful. All right, take care of yourselves. Bye-bye. Keep thinking free.